Hello everyone, welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. Today's Friday, so we're going to be looking at all the other matchups for the week, doing start sits, and just going from there. Uh, so without further ado, we'll get into it. First off, we got the Panthers and the Saints. We'll start off with the Panthers side. We got Teddy Bridgewater, he's going to be a sit this week, unless you're a really quarterback needy team, or in a two quarterback or super flex league. Uh, Mike Davis, you can start him in this one. You just got to kind of tamper your expectations with him. The Saints do have a pretty good run defense. DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, you could probably start both of them this week. Curtis Samuel's still going to be a sit. Ian Thomas will be a sit as well. Panthers defense is going to be a sit. And question mark for the Panthers kicker. We do not know who it's going to be. Graham Gano is on the COVID list. And they did bring in some guys to try out. With the new NFL rules, they had to be tested like five consecutive days or something like that. So they both so they got like three guys in doing it. Or they got like a practice squad punter slash kicker. So you want to avoid that situation altogether. Like I've been saying last couple weeks, not going to talk too much about kickers. If there's anything notable like this situation, I will mention it, though. Then we got on the Saints side, Drew Brees. You can start him in this matchup. He's a low-end quarterback one this week. Alvin Kamara is a must-start every week. Latavius Murray is a borderline, like, low-end running back two flex play in this matchup. Panthers' run defense isn't very good. He should see some opportunities. Michael Thomas, if he plays, you can start him. If he doesn't play, he's obviously a sit. Emmanuel Sanders, you could start if Michael Thomas doesn't play. Traquan Smith's going to be a sit. Uh, Jared Cook, if, if you're a tight end needy team, you can play him in this matchup. But otherwise, you're probably going to have a better option. So he's probably a sit in most cases. Saints defense, you can start. And then the next game we got is the Bills and the Jets. So on the Bills side, we got Josh Allen. Is going to be a start. Jets defense is not good overall. Devin Singletary is a start, but he's like a low end running back two flex play. Uh, Zach Moss is going to be a sit until we see more from him. Stephon Diggs is a start. John Brown's probably like a borderline wide receiver three. Flex play in this matchup. It just depends on how much they throw the ball. We have to see if he's healthy. Uh, I know he did play last week, but he's been banged up quite a bit. You can start him if you need to, but if you don't, just go ahead and sit him. Uh, Gabriel Davis is going to be a sit. Cole Beasley, if you're in a PPR league and you need... You just need somebody to plug and play at wide receiver, you can play him. Otherwise, he's probably going to be a sit. Dawson Knox is a sit. Bill's defense is a must start this week against the Jets offense. And then on the Jets side, we got Sam Darnold, Joe Flacco. Not really sure who's going to start yet. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Sam Darnold has practice in a limited fashion So this week. I believe it's probably going to be Joe Flacco going again. So it probably makes the Jets offense even worse than it already is. Frank Gore, the Michael P. Ryan, they're both... Low end running back two flex play options. P. Ryan played more, but Gore got more touches last week. So we'll just have to see how this situation shakes out. I've tried to avoid both of them if you can, but if you need to plug and play one, probably leaning Gore just on the volume. Rashad Perriman's going to be a sit. Jamison Crowder, if he plays, he's a start. If he doesn't play, he's going to be a sit. He did miss practice, I believe it was yesterday. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that, see how it all plays out. If he doesn't play and Sam Darnold's the quarterback, Braxton Brios would be an interesting name in PPR formats. Uh, otherwise, take a look for Jeff Smith, but they're not anybody I'm rushing out to get in start. Chris Herndon's obviously a sit. Jets defense is a sit as well. Then we got the Browns and the Bengals. And on the Browns side, we got Baker Mayfield. He's going to be a sit unless you're in a two-quarterback or super flex league. I know he did pretty well against the Bengals the last time they played on Thursday Night Football, but he's still kind of banged up, so we just have to keep an eye out on him. Kareem Hunt's going to be a must-start. Dernus Johnson's a sit. Odell Beckham Jr. you can start. Jarvis Landry's kind of a borderline guy. Uh, it's not the worst matchup in the world for him, but if you need to start him, you can. If you don't, you obviously sit him. Austin Hooper, you can start this week. Low end tight end one category. Browns defense, they could be a streaming option this week. It just kind of depends on how this game goes. Uh, last time they played, it was a little bit more high scoring, so just keep that in mind. Joe Burrow is going to be a sit. Joe Mixon is going to be a sit as he's been ruled out for this game. So Giovanni Bernard comes into play. You can play him in this game. He's more like a low-end running back two flex play type of option. Better in PPR formats than anything. He should see enough volume to matter, but overall, the Bengals offensive line is not very good, and the Browns are decent against the running game. Tyler Boyd, you can start. He's kind of like a wide receiver three, flex play type of guy this week. Uh, probably more on the wide receiver three type of play. Uh, AJ Green, he did show us a little bit last week, but I'm still going to sit him. Not too much more to say about that, honestly. T. Higgins, you can start. Drew Samples is a sit. The Bengals defense could be a streaming option as well with Baker Mayfield banged up. It, like I said, with the Brown side, it's kind of the same way. Talked a little bit about both those in my DFS video as well. 
Cowboys and the Washington football team. Cowboys said we got Andy Dalton. He's going to sit. He didn't look very good on Monday night, so you don't want to roll him out there. Ezekiel Elliott's obviously a start. Amari Cooper, you can start. Michael Gallup, I'm sitting. CeeDee Lamb, I think you can start as a wide receiver three type of guy. Uh, Dalton Schultz, probably like a low-end tight end one, high-end tight end two, so if you need to start him, you can. Cowboys defense is going to be a sit. Uh, It could be a decent streaming matchup, but I just don't trust their defense with how poorly it's played so far this year. Kyle Allen's a sit. Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick are both starts this week. Cowboys defense is not great overall. And if you're playing in PPR leagues, McKissick offers a safe floor and Gibson offers some upside for you. Terry McLaurin I do like is a start this week. I do kind of like him in DFS as well. He wasn't really in my video since he's at 5,800, but he's still at a decent price. And he could put up some stats against this Cowboys defense. Dontrell Edmonds is sit. Logan Thomas is, he's like a borderline guy. He's probably like a low-end tight end one, high-end tight end two. If you need to play him, you can. If you don't, you don't. Washington's defense could be a decent streaming option with how poorly Andy Dalton played, how banged up their offensive line is, and how good Washington's defensive line is. Then we got probably my most interesting game of the week. For me personally, since I'm a Texans fan, is the Texans and the Packers. We got Deshaun Watson. He's going to be a start. David Johnson, you can start in this one. Packers run defense is not too good overall. Duke Johnson is going to be a sit. Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, you can start both of them this week. They've both been seeing quite a bit of targets, especially since Bill O'Brien left town. Randall Cobbs is a sit. Darren Fells, you can start if Jordan Aikens misses again. If he doesn't, then you can't start either one of them. Texans defense is obviously a sit. And then on the Packers side, we got Aaron Rodgers. You're going to start him. Aaron Jones, you can start, obviously. And then Jamal Williams is actually an interesting name. If you play like in a in a very deep league and you're needing a running back to just kind of plug and play this week, he wouldn't be the worst option in the world. I expect the Packers to be winning early and him to get a lot of carries later on in the game because they won't need Aaron Jones. Devontae Adams is obviously a start. MVS is a sit. Robert Tanyan is a sit as well. He's kind of banged up. I just don't trust his production, especially with Adams back now. Packers defense is a sit as well. And then we got the Lions and the Falcons. So on the Lions side, we got Matt Stafford. He's a start. Falcons defense is very poor against the pass. So Stafford should have a good game overall. Adrian Peterson, he's a low end, like running back two flex play type of guy. If you need to play him, you can. Same thing with DeAndre Swift. Swift's probably a little bit better in PPR, and Peterson's a little bit better in standard formats. Kenny Galladay is a must start for me this week. Marvin Jones, he's probably like somebody you could put in your flex spot. He just hasn't done that much this year, so he's kind of hard to trust. TJ Hawkinson's a start for me. Lions defense is obviously a sit. And then on the Lions side, Matt Ryan's a start. Lions defense is almost as bad as the Falcons defense. Todd Gurley's a start. Julio Jones is a start. Calvin Ridley's all a start as well. Russell Gage and Hayden Hurst, I'm going to be sending both of them this week. I just don't trust their role in the offense enough to be worth it. And then Atlanta's defense is obviously a sit. Uh, Young Hoku was back last week, so he looks like he's going to be the kicker moving forward. Then we got the Steelers and the Titans on the Steelers side. Big Ben Roethlisberger, he's going to be a start. Titans haven't done too great against the pass so far this year. So I think you can start Big Ben in this game and be all right. James Connors is a start. Juju Smith-Schuster is going to be a set this week. Deontay Johnson's kind of a borderline guy for me. If you need to start him, you can. If you don't, just sit him and let him. And, let, and let's just see what he does this week, especially with the emergence of Chase Claypool. Johnson has practiced this week, so it looks like he'll play. Then Claypool, you can start. Uh, just kind of tamper your expectations with him, especially with Johnson returning to the lineup. Then we got Eric Ebron. I think you can start Eric Ebron in this matchup if you need to. If you don't, then obviously you'll sit him. Steelers defense, you're pretty much starting every week. I know the Titans have been pretty good on offense, but the Steelers defense is one of the best in the league. Ryan Tannehill, you're going to start. Ryan Tannehill, we are starting until further notice until he shows us otherwise. Derrick Henry is obviously a start. A.J. Brown, you can start in this one as well. Corey Davis is going to be a sit. Adam Humphreys, if you're in a PPR league, you could probably roll out if you need somebody at the end of your lineup. But otherwise, you probably should be sitting him. John New Smith is going to play, it looks like. He did have that ankle injury last week, so you're starting him. But just kind of tamper your expectations since he is a little bit banged up. Titans defense is going to be a sit. Then we got the Raiders and the Buccaneers, and on the Raiders side, we got Derek Carr. Derek Carr's going to be sitting this one. He's played very well this year, and the Buccaneers' one weakness is they can be beat over the top, and Oakland has the weapons to do that, but even then, I'm not trusting them to do it often enough to make Derek Carr valuable this week. Then we got Josh Jacobs. He's a start. 
but just tamper your expectations. They have had um, some issues with COVID testing for the linemen, so they could be without some starting linemen, and it could affect his production quite a bit. Henry Ruggs is going to be a sit. He's kind of boomer bust. We just want to see a little bit more from him. Same thing with Nelson Aguilar. Darren Waller is going to be a start. Raiders defense is a sit. Then on the Buccaneers side, we got Tom Brady. He's going to be a start. Oakland's defense isn't that great, honestly. Ronald Jones is pretty much a must start this week against Oakland, who has given up the third most points to the running back position. Uh, and Jones has had back-to-back-to-back weeks of 100-yard games, so look for him to continue his streak. Leonard Fournette, he did miss last week, which was kind of odd since he played two weeks ago. But until he really works his way into this offense, we can't trust him at all, so he's going to be a sit. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, I think you can start both of them in this matchup and be fine. Gronkowski and Cameron Brait. You can probably play Gronkowski in this game if you need to. Otherwise, uh, you're going to be setting both these guys. Tampa Bay defense, you can start pretty much every week. So keep rolling with them. And then we got the Broncos and the Chiefs. On the Broncos side, we got Drew Locke. He's an obvious set for me. Talked a lot about him this week. He didn't play good last week, and he hasn't played good against the Chiefs last year. And then we got Melvin Gordon. You can start him, but just kind of tamper your expectations. I expect him and Philip Lindsay to be 50 50 split. Philip Lindsay's a guy that you can throw in there if you really need someone. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting him. Tim Patrick, I think you can start as a wide receiver three this week and be all right with it. Jerry Judy, I just don't trust enough. I'm going to be sitting him. Noah Fant, I think you can start. Just kind of tamper your expectations coming back from that ankle injury that he did suffer. Broncos defense is a sit for me going against the high-powered Chiefs offense. Then we got Patrick Mahomes. He's going to be a start. Clyde edwards Lair is a start. Le'Veon Bell should see some play in this game as well. Bell is pretty much a sit for me until we see what his role in this offense is. Demarcus Robinson is actually a sneaky guy this week. I think he's somebody you could plug in as a wide receiver three or a flex play if you need absolutely need to, and he won't kill your team. McCall Hardman is going to be a sit. He just doesn't see enough volume. Tyree Kill is a start. Travis Kelsey is a start. And the Chiefs defense is a streamable matchup in this one going against Drew Locke this week. Then we have the Chargers and the Jaguars. So we, on the Chargers side, we got Justin Herbert. He's pretty much a easy start this week. Jaguars defense is not that good overall. Justin Jackson, Joshua Kelly. So I expect a 50-50 timeshare with these guys, depending on the game script. I think this could be a better week for Kelly, so I'm going to be starting him if I need a running back. If I don't need a running back, I'm probably going to avoid both these guys. Jackson's probably a little bit better overall in PPR. Kelly's a little bit better in standard. Mike Williams is somebody I do like as a wide receiver three this week. I think he has a lot of potential in this matchup. Keenan Allen is going to be a start as well. He's been seeing a ton of volume since Herbert took over, so that's definitely a good sign for him. Hunter Henry is a start as well. Chargers defense is going to be a sit. Then we got Gardner Minshew is going to be... He's like a borderline guy. You can start him if you really need to. If you, I doubt you probably need to if you're playing in a one-quarterback league, though. Uh, James Robinson, you can start in this one. Just kind of tamper expectations. Chris Thompson is going to be a sit. DJ Chark is kind of a start, but he's more like a wide receiver three or a flex play this week. He should be going up against Casey Hayward. Not the best matchup in the world for him. Keelan Cole is a start as like a wide receiver three. LaVisca Chanel, you can start in like a PPR league if you need to. I just don't trust him enough this week. I think Desmond King's going to be on him, and I don't think he's going to be able to do a lot. Uh, Tyler Eifert is a sit. I believe he's injured. I don't know if he's going to play in this one. I haven't looked too much into that one yet, honestly. But we can uh, look more into that as we go. Jaguars defense is a sit. And then we got the Patriots and the 49ers. On the Patriots side, we got Cam Newton. You can start Cam Newton in this one. I consider him like a low-end quarterback one this week. He didn't look the best coming back last week. Their offense line is pretty banged up and dealing with COVID as well. So just kind of tamper your expectations for him. Patriots running backs, I'm not... I'm not starting anyone. Unless I'm in a PPR league, then James White is okay to start. Nikhil Harry, Julian Edelman, Demir Bird, Ryan Izzo. I'm pretty much sitting all these guys until we see a little bit more from the Patriots offense overall. Patriots defense, you can play in this matchup and be all right with. Jimmy Garoppolo, honestly, he's a guy that I like going forward, but in this matchup, I don't particularly like him, so he's going to be a sit. McKinnon is going to be a start, especially in PPR leagues. Raheem Mostert's going to be out for a while now, so he's going to be... Probably the lead back, but I expect a lot of a committee in this one. Something's going on with McKinnon. The 49ers aren't telling us, and he hasn't played as much the last couple games. So it's very concerning. So that's why I'm leaning more towards PPR. Jeff Olson Jr. and Michael Hasty, they're both going to be sits. 
Unless Jeff Wilson Jr. does not play, if it's just McKinnon and Hasty, you could probably play Hasty in like a standard league. Then we got Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel. They're both kind of like wide receiver three flex plays for me. You can play them if you need to. If you don't need to, then just set them. George Kittle's a must start. And the 49ers defense, you can start them if you need to, but it's not the best matchup in the world. We got the Seahawks and the Cardinals. So we got Russell Wilson. He's an obvious start. Chris Carson's a start. DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett are both starts. Greg Olson's a sit, and the Seahawks' defense is also a sit. Not too much to say there. It's pretty much what we've been rolling with all year with the Seahawks. Coming off their bye week, hopefully hopefully all these guys are going to be as healthy as they're going to be all year. So definitely good news there. I expect a lot of offense in this game overall. Kyler Murray is a start. Kenyon Drake, I think, is a start as well. Chase Edmonds, you could probably play in like a PPR league if you need to. They'll probably throw him the ball a little bit, especially if they get behind early. DeAndre Hopkins is a start. Larry Fitzgerald's a sit. Christian Kirk is like a borderline guy, wide receiver three, flex play. You can start him if you really need to. Should be a positive matchup for him, and he's been showing a little bit more in recent weeks. Then the tight end position, Dan Arnold, Daryl Daniels, you're going to be setting both of them. They haven't done anything this year. Cardinals defense is a set as well. Then we got the Rams and the Bears. So on the Rams side, we got Jared Goff. He's going to be a set for me this week. You should have better options available to you. Chicago Bears defense is above average, so... I wouldn't expect Goff to have the greatest game in the world. Then the Rams running backs, I'd start Daryl Henderson and set the other two. Uh, just kind of tamper your expectations for Henderson this week. We may see them work more towards the committee role than what we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup. If I had to pick one, I'd start Cooper Cup in this matchup. Robert Woods you can start as well, but uh, with Fuller on him, you just kind of tamper your expectations. Both the Rams tight ends, Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett, I'm not playing in this matchup. They're just both not seeing enough volume to matter at this point. The Rams defense, you can start. They're probably a middle-of-pack defense this week. Then we got Nick Foles. He's a sit unless you're in two-quarterback or super flex league. David Montgomery, you should be starting him pretty much every week at this point. Honestly, he's going to get enough volume to matter. He might be a little touchdown reliant, but he is seeing some catches as well, so that helps boost his value, especially in PPR formats. Allen Robinson's a must-start. Anthony Miller, Darnell Mooney, and Darnell Mooney. You can sit both of them until they show us more. Jimmy Graham, this is an okay matchup for him, so you can start him as well. Bears defense, you can start too. All right, guys, so that was the starts and sits for the remaining 13 matchups for this week. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed this. Hopefully it gave you a little bit of insight and help into who you should start and sit for this week. If you have any other start and sit questions at all, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I will respond to each and every one of them. And with that being said, if there's anything else or any certain matchups you're watching this week, uh, let me know down in the comments below as well. If you guys need to reach out to me for any reason at all, whether it's start, sit, who should I pick up, who should I trade, anything like that, uh, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Or you can re- get a hold of me at my email at coachcraigsports at gmail.com, on the Coach Craig Sports Facebook page, or on Twitter at Coach Craig Sport. But if you guys liked and enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It helps build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports. That's one that's built around you guys watching my videos, helping you enjoy fantasy football more this season, being competitive, and bringing home some championships. But with that being said, please be sure to also hit that notification bell. It'll let you know every single time I post up a video. Like I've been saying, I post up about five videos a week. Monday is the top performer from the previous week. Tuesday is the waiver wire video. Wednesday, we talk about the Thursday night matchup. i do a little preview on it, start sits for that game. Thursday, we talk about DFS value picks for the week on DraftKings. And then Friday, we go over all the other remaining matchups. Just another note, or I did test out the internet here. Uh, the signal is not as strong, so it looks like I'm not going to be able to do a live stream on Sunday. But I'll try to get it like another video out, whether it's Saturday or Sunday. Um, just talking about anything that any important news that comes up before the week. With that being said, that's all I got for this video. Hope you all enjoyed and have a great rest of your day.